Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 1, Introduction to Information Security. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to define information security, understand the history of information security and how it evolved, be familiar with information security lexicons, understand how information security is implemented, and understand the people responsible for ensuring security within an organization. The history of information security. So the field of computer security began immediately after the first computers were developed. And the first computers that were developed are um, called mainframes. Mainframe computers are really big computers that are usually secured somewhere in a sensitive place, really, really big that tend to take a lot of space. And they have lesser memory as well as less RAM than the computers we have today. One of those computers, oh, one of those computers was actually used to break the Enigma. And we will talk a little bit more about the Enigma, but it is um, the, the mainframe computer that was used at the time really transformed and also had a lot of impact on the computer security field. Prior to the mainframe computers, security was usually focused more on physical controls when computer security began, the field still continued within physical controls. So mainframe computers were only protected physically where they are stored somewhere and a lock is put to ensure that no one has access to the mainframe computers. One of the reasons why physical uh, controls were more of a priority at the time is because mainframe computers of that time were not really networked. So one computer, one mainframe cannot really talk to another mainframe. Each mainframe is considered just a standalone on its own and it doesn't connect to any network. So as such, the only people who can access mainframe computers must be physically present to access it. And uh, that Protection all revolved around physical theft, ensuring that physical theft doesn't happen. Um, no one, no unauthorized individual has access to those mainframe computers that, such that espionage, sabotage, and things like that doesn't happen. Some key, informa uh, key dates regarding um, information security in 1968, Maurice discussed password security in time, which is basically how password is being shared, as well as how to ensure that computers can be used without really sharing passwords. And um, well, not really an example, but this is more around Whenever you're accessing a computer, the ability for each single user to have its own individual account and have a unique password. That is what Morris was talking about. In 1970, a document is actually a report called the RAND R609, authored by Willis, was um, released to DOD. Now, it was classified at the time and it got declassified in 1975. And it is considered the first document that identified the vulnerabilities within a computer system. We will see more into that. 1973, these three individuals pretty much examined military systems and also identified vulnerabilities and made notes of how this systems can be secured as well as optimized. FIPS also examined DES 
DES is an encryption algorithm. We will talk more when we get to the cryptographic um, chapter, but DES is an encryption uh, is a is a symmetric encryption algorithm that is used to secure information. In 1978, additional report came out towards um, additional report came out that discussed the protection analysis of a project created by ARPA. ARPA is DARPA today, um, but it is the research agency within Department of Defense, within the US Department of Defense that handle our research and uh, they are really the, considered the pioneers of networking. We will also talk a little bit more in depth around that. 1979, Unix, um, security of Unix was discussed. 1982, trusted computer security documents, also known as the Rainbow Series, which we don't really use these days, but they are considered some of the early documents that really outline how computers will be secured in terms of providing um, a policy and things like that within an organization. 1982, Unix operating system was also um, for, for, impo uh, for important handles to computer security were identified within Unix OS. 1984, file security and Unix system was also discussed. Now at this stage, network um, networking exists. As a result, it means access to files within a computer system needs to also be protected, not just at a physical level, but there is a chance of, there is a possibility of someone who is not physically present to be able to access documents within a computer system. 1992, died. IETF worked with the Naval Research uh, Lab to develop a simple internet protocol called SIP, which um, transformed to what we refer to as IPsec today. The Enigma. So the Enigma is an encryption device used by the Nazi Germany for military communication during World War II. There are a little misconception that usually happen is that the Enigma that was used during World War II was the first version of the Enigma. It actually wasn't. The first version of the Enigma happened before World War II and it would got broken by the Polish. Um, yes, the early versions of the German code machine Enigma were first broken by the Poles in 1930. That's also another misconception. Ever, um, Alan Turin, who is the re who really broke the enigma that was used during World War II was considered the first person to break the enigma, but he wasn't. He actually was able to break the enigma for um, used during World War II with the help of the Poles. They were the first to break um, to break the enigma, where they were able to decrypt it and. Um, Again, the Enigma is the machine that was used by the Nazi Germans to, for military communication. And these are highly secured communication. Um, when you get the chance, watch the movie called The Imitation Game. It really um, brought to light what kind of happened as well as how things went and also touch a little bit uh, of Alan Turing's personal life. He attended University of Jam, uh, University of Manchester in the UK. And um, whenever you find yourself there, you should definitely go check out the little um, garden and memorial, the Alan Turing Memorial is really um, a great place to check. The information that was um, being decrypted from the Enigma was actually uh, actually really helped towards ensuring the end of World War II. I believe it was said that um, the ability to decrypt the Enigma resulted into um, ending World War II almost two years earlier, something like that. Now, the history of computer security um, in general. In 1960s, ARPANET 
program was initiated by Opera. Opera is called DAPR today. Like I mentioned earlier, it is the agency that handles DOD research. And they began researching on redundant network communication. That's the ability for two computers to communicate at the time. And Larry Roberts developed the ARPANET from its inception. He was an employee of um, ARPA at the time. DAPR still exists. They, are, they do a lot of research. When you get the time, definitely um, go to their website. You will see their work and everything. They are also here in Arlington. In the 1970s and 1980s, security concerns around Opera Network began to come up because if you could remember, regarding mainframes, they weren't connected to any network. So that really wasn't much emphasis on securing how the two how two computers can communicate with each other because they can't even they they cannot communicate with uh, two mainframes cannot really communicate. Most of them are just standalone devices. Now, after ARPANET program, the ARPA network, now two computers can communicate. Process of establishing the communication was usually using dial-up. If you could remember dial-up, and if you have taken my IT520 class, you should definitely have a good understanding of dial-up, but basically it's just getting internet connection through our phone lines. When the ARPANET program came into place, there wasn't really security considerations in mind for how to secure dial-up connections. Considering dial-up is being used to establish the networking capabilities of ARPANET, it had to be secured, but there was, not, there was nothing in place. In addition, there was also no user identification or authorization to the systems. So if Computer A is trying to talk with computer B using dial-up. Computer A can just access computer B without a need to identify itself or even seek authorization from computer B before it connects. All these security concerns started coming up within um, around 1970s and 1980s. By the end of 1970s, 1980s, uh, by the end of 1970s, early 80s, and around that same period, a lot of computer security research reports and things like that started coming out. Things like the RAND report I mentioned earlier. Um, let me see, I actually have a page with the RAND report here. So this is considered one of, uh, this is the RAND report and it is considered the first report that really um, outlined security controls for computer systems. and. When you get the chance, it used to be classified. Now it is declassified. When you get the chance, definitely read it. And if you are in my class, then it should be available on Canvas. I will definitely be uploading it on Canvas. But it's really an interesting paper. It is old, but um, the, the concept still exists and it's still useful to date. When you get the chance, definitely take a look at it. Multics mainframe. So mainframe computers also use operating systems. Multics is the first operating systems that was security focused, meaning it was designed with security in mind. And as a result of that, security kind of transformed from physical to data access, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Around that when you look into um, how mainframes used to be and the importance on just securing the physical access to mainframes, now with Multics, we also understand that there is a need to secure, to have a logical security around the data, logical access, and Multics was the first operating system that had that in mind. By the 1980s and 1990s, we are now on the internet. Now, prior to that, ARPANET was just an interagency and government entities and educational organizations, pretty much people within ARPA or at the time and DAPA today, um, US government military systems and US affiliates 
were the only people within that network. However, by the 80s and 90s, a lot of computers exist, personal computers are becoming a common thing at the time, portable computers as well have started evolving and a lot of computers are getting connected and we are having this global scale of networks of networks, but um, which is basically what internet is. But still, security was considered a really low priority and the internet was not secured at the time. Well, it's still not is secured. You still have to have security controls in place. But at the time, there weren't security capabilities to implement as much as we do have today. And security wasn't really a concern like it is today. DevCon, Dev, um, in the around the same time was when DevCon started. DevCon is just a, uh, it's a conference around security and hacking. Definitely check them out. They always um, hold a yearly conference and it's a big thing. The first virus called the Morris worm is around the same time that it came out and really transformed the entire landscape. When you get the chance, uh, definitely read about Morris worm. Um, I'll also upload a report around Morris Worm, but it is the first virus of the first computer virus that was um, created. By the 2000s, now computers have become very common. The internet has become common and people are, people, organization, nations, and pretty much a lot of things are becoming dependent upon technology, computers, and the internet. Well, um, medical records are switching back to the internet. Um, no, medical records are switching to computer systems. Uh, computer systems are being utilized by banks for information processing. A lot of things are becoming dependent on the internet. So as a result, there is now definitely loopholes that can be exploited and there is definitely value in terms of what exists within systems that are able to connect to the internet. You find things like uh, banks have customers and employee records within computer systems and if someone can access it remotely, they can definitely alter the records and change whatever the information is. A lot of nations are putting their sensitive and including their research records within computer systems that are also connected to the networks. That results in cyber warfare because one nation state can attack another nation state uh, by just accessing their information or messing with their things or even blocking access. Uh, when you get the chance also take a look at Stuxnet. It's um, a big deal that happened in Iran and their nuclear program and things like that. Cyber terrorism started becoming a thing. Cyber attacks and all those things started happening in 2000. And we're still going through it to date. This is pretty much the program plan, kind of just the highlight of the program plan. This is DAPA's logo, as it is today. But yes, this is the ARPANET program plan From the run report, this is um, how computer network vulnerabilities were identified at the time from the report. When you read the report, you'll definitely see all these um, controls in place, uh, proposals for controls that should be applicable at each single stage here. But when you see uh, here, we have like the files and it identifies like, okay, the files can be stolen, um, they can be copied unauthorized access to the files can happen, but for you to even access the file, there has to be some sort of a processor, which could be a hardware or software or combination of both. A hardware issue could be failure of protection circuit um, that contribute, which will definitely contribute to the software failures. The software could be uh, vulnerabilities, could be failure of protection features, such as access controls, bound controls, and bound controls means incoming bounds or outgoing bounds. 
because you can have a file as a read only by just configuring it. So which means the inbound connection will be allowed, but outbound connection, if you do not want the file to be shared, cannot go out, etc. The operator, that's the people responsible for the device, the machines and everything. The communication line, just like we mentioned with dial up, which is the communication line or communication path that is being used to establish the networking. The network can also be um, tapped. Crosstalk has to do with introducing noise and things like that. Uh, radiation, if there is no proper insulation on the medium, because at the time there wasn't wireless connection or um, it was mostly well, there was wireless connection around radio frequencies, but not for networking. The, so it uses a lot of um, coaxial cables were leveraged at the time to establish connections and it requires children. And um, pretty much all of that. So now that we understand how information security evolved from where it was to where it is,